Welcome to this overview of week four in essay writing for university. So this week we will complete uh, module two of the study guide which is playing with paragraphs and the module that we began last week. Uh, and what we'll be covering this week or what you will be covering this week uh, are more paragraph structures. Um, you will um, read reading 7 and reading 8 that are available to you on the Moodle site in the resource materials section uh, and most importantly you will be completing and submitting assignment 1 which is the academic paragraphs assignment and I'll talk a bit more about that in this uh, short lecture so let's get moving. So the most important thing is for you to focus on this week is getting that assignment finished. It's due this Friday and it needs to be submitted to be on time uh, by 11.45 p.m. And you will submit that assignment by uploading the electronic Word document uh, at Moodle and there'll be more instructions on how to do this elsewhere on the site. Uh, the most important thing to keep in mind here is that if you hand that assignment in late uh, and Moodle records uh, when it has been submitted for us. So if it is late you will lose 5% of your marks um, for the assignment for every day that it's late and that includes um, Saturday and Sunday as individual days. Uh, so if for some reason you have some extenuating circumstances which you think um, would allow you to request an extension on the due date of that assignment, you need to make sure that you have done that um, 24 hours before the due date, so 24 hours before Friday at 11.45 p.m. and you do um, you do that by going to the support block on the Moodle page for EWU and using the um, link to the assessment extension request. So you can see that on the page there. And this is on the left hand side of the EWU main page, the support block. So if you need it, that is where you go to. Extensions are not automatically granted. You will have to have um, a good uh, reason and sometimes we may ask for supporting documentation such as a medical certificate if you've been unwell. Um, so do your best to try not to need an extension because that will only put you um, on the back foot in the course and will mean that you're behind as we continue through the weeks. But if there is a genuine reason as to one is needed that will be considered by the course coordinator and your lecturer. So to complete the assignment you need to complete the work in the study guide uh, about academic paragraphs. So there's another video uh, that explains some other paragraph um, patterns within that academic paragraph structure within the week 4 Moodle topic. So watch that in conjunction with the material that's in the study guide in module 2 about paragraphs and work through the activities. But the most important one for you to do is activity 210 and this is the second part of assignment 1. So activity 210 is about writing a compare contrast paragraph and the paragraph that you produce as, um, as you follow that activity through will form the second part of your assignment that you submit on Friday. So it's really important particularly around that activity that if you're not understanding something or you need something clarified you're asking questions of your lecturer um, and if you're a distance student it's really vital that you're using the discussion forums to do this um, because that's where your support lecturer is looking for your questions uh, about anything to do with EWU. So in terms of the assignment the most um, appropriate discussion forums to use are the assignment discussion forum you can see there in that you will find in the communication block or you might use the general study, study material discussion forum. So your lecturer will be monitoring those um, this week in particular to answer any questions you have about assignment one. Now reading seven and reading eight in the resource materials 
will help you uh, to get a better understanding of what we're expecting with your academic writing that we're moving towards. So some of the key points in there um, will help you understand more about how to write in the third person rather than in the first person. Now there was some um, activities and material on that in module one and this will emphasize um, these readings will emphasize that for you further particularly reading eight. Uh, it's really important that you're writing now in complete sentences so avoiding um, the poor sentence structures that we looked at in the last couple of weeks fragments uh, and freight train sentences or using comma splices um, and it's also uh, important we're looking to see that you use a variety of sentence structures so not just all simple sentences but some compound sentences using cohesive ties and also some complex sentences. So those are the things that we worked through in module one that you'll need to recall as you're putting your two paragraphs together. We'll also be looking for you to use appropriate cohesive ties uh, in your par two paragraphs and to be writing um, in low modality. So reading eight explains very clearly what modality is and why in academic writing we use low modality. So if you have questions about that your internal lecturer will be going through those concepts in class with you to help you understand the readings and the study material um, and your distance lecturers will also be able to help you with those things. So the most important piece of advice I can give you overall here with regard to completing assignment one is to make sure that you've thoroughly read the requirements of the task and fulfill them to the best of your ability. So often the reason why people don't do as well as they think um, they might have when they get their assignment back is just because they've forgotten something or they've missed something in the instructions of the assignment so it's not that the work is um, poor but what we're looking for is that you submit everything you need to and you're fulfilling what the task asks you to do so the task is the two academic paragraphs activity 26 and activity 210 the paragraphs that result from those activities and the reflective response. So if you don't hand in both paragraphs obviously that's going to affect your mark in a negative way or if you don't submit the reflective response then you've missed something from the assignment and that will affect your mark also. So it's basic things like that that we're also um, emphasizing for you as you work towards getting this assignment finished. So here's some things that you should be thinking about. Make sure both paragraphs that you write have a clear topic sentence, um, clear prove it points and a concluding sentence. So basically that they follow that uh, academic paragraph structure. And then make sure that you're using appropriate cohesive ties for each paragraph. So one paragraph is a thesis illustration paragraph and the other one is a co compare contrast paragraph. And you will have seen in the study guide in the big list of um, cohesive ties that some are more appropriate to different types of paragraphs than others. So in the compare contrast paragraph we're going to be looking to see if you've used compare contrast cohesive ties and uh, because that will mean that the purpose of your paragraph is better fulfilled than if there are none, none there. Make sure once you have written your paragraphs that you proofread them really carefully um, and so check the spelling, check that you haven't missed out any words, check that all the punctuation is in place as best you can, as best you can do it. Make sure with the ref reflective response that you respond to all the prompts that are provided. So there's five prompt questions so we will be looking to see that you have provided an answer to each of those prompts and so if one or two of them are missed out again that will affect the way we mark your assignment because you haven't done your best to complete um, the whole task and um, fulfill all the requirements there. And the final point there is to ensure that you're within the acceptable boundaries of the word limits for your paragraph and the reflective response. So the word limits are listed on the task sheet and the rule of thumb is that it's acceptable for you to be 10% higher or lower than the word limit that's set. 
So we're particularly concerned with this with the academic paragraphs which have a word limit of uh, 200 words. So that means you can go 10% higher than 200 or 10% under 200 and it's still acceptable. But if it's much less than that or much greater than that, that means again that you haven't fulfilled the task as it's been set out and it will affect your mark to some degree. So if you're concerned about um, the word limit or you have questions about that, that's another thing that you need to ask your lecturer either on campus or in the discussion forums on Moodle and they will clarify for you. So in summary, get your assignment finished and submitted on time. Ask questions sooner rather than later. Don't leave it till the last minute. We will not be guaranteeing that we're monitoring the Moodle discussion forums right up until 11.45 on Friday night. So if you've got questions, ask them during the week so you've got time to get the answer um, and that we've got time to get through all the questions that we might be receiving from students. And once you've done that, you congratulate yourself on your achievements so far because you will have finished your first assessment and you will be ready to start module three in week five next week.